Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. So this is a lot of information to go over, so we got to just jump right into it. So first of all, just like the thumbnail and the title suggests, it looks like there's a big team up between Bitcoin or Bitcoin OS and Cardano. It's kind of, it's complex, but it's not that bad. But this is what we have as far as the information. So Cardano comes home to Bitcoin in a Grail Bridge integration. Cardano, 11th largest blockchain and market cap is integrating the Bitcoin OS Grail Bridge. Great, what the hell is that? What this does is it makes Cardano the first major layer one blockchain to plug into Bitcoin OS. First of all, you got to figure out what the heck is Bitcoin OS, how they're making money, and how does this actually work? And to do that, first we have to backtrack because this is great. I think this is great news and I find it fascinating, but the market does not care. Cardano in the last 24 hours, as far as price action, went from 35 cents down to, well, just dropped. It dropped a little bit, not too big. But uh, you would think like something like this would really just take off. However, this just dropped this morning. So we're on an upwards trajectory. Maybe it does something, maybe it does nothing. And I understand a lot of, a lot of people hate Cardano. A lot of people don't like Cardano whatsoever. And uh, that's fine. But this is what's going on. But if we take a look at this and just say, ah, well, see, it's just, it's just no news, it's a big nothing burger. Remember this, Tesla, we just had their earnings call, which they blew it out of the water. That's why the stock's up so high. But just remember that during the big reveal, when they did like uh, the Tesla taxis and the Optimus autonomous robots, the stock tanked the next day. And it wasn't until the actual earnings call and everything started to really take off. So maybe we'll see something, maybe, maybe not, but we have to give a little bit of time. And when I, was, when I was looking at this about what it was doing, I've been talking about this for quite some time about how different crypto digital asset projects just start getting rolled into each other. And I gave the example of like how Amazon, big Amazon just doesn't create new things. It just hoovers up all the different companies and just buys them. Like, hey, Zappos, you're doing great. We're going to buy you. Twitch, awesome. We're going to buy you. Whole Foods, we're going to buy you. 13 billion, whatever, we're going to buy you. We don't want to start from scratch. And that's how I saw like, like a Solana, just kind of hoovering up other different projects or like we've seen it right now with uh, Ocean Protocol, uh, Singular and Fetch AI as they rolled together and became ASI. And it made a lot of sense, but I did not have this on my bingo card of just having Bitcoin. This would be like the exact opposite of what this is. So instead of like, you know, Bitcoin, the CEO of Bitcoin going, hey, we're going to buy Ethereum because there is no Bitcoin CEO, I don't know if you knew that. But uh, if that was the case, then let's just say that Bitcoin is just there to build on, right? That's why Lightning Network, no one went to the Lightning Network and said, hey, uh, we need to talk to the CEO of Bitcoin and build on Bitcoin. That doesn't happen. It's an open platform, so they can do whatever they want to. So this would be like, this would almost be like if Amazon was just an open network and said, hey, we deliver everything. You know, we have that capacity, we have storage, just create a product and we'll deliver it for you. Essentially, that's kind of what happens, but you don't have projects building on it. Like what is exactly going on reverse? So this is co-founder Iñago, and he's gonna explain what this means. And then we're gonna get into what the heck Bitcoin OS, what ZK snarks are, what rollups are and all that great stuff. So you understand what the heck is going on. So let me make sure you can hear this guy perfectly. Take a listen, this is about three minutes or so. It's gonna it's gonna make a lot of sense. There's some things I didn't know. I didn't know Bitcoin was a casino. Check this out. We've been suffering from a bit of a, a dual purpose here in the whole world of crypto since the very, very beginning. In the very, very beginning, Bitcoin version 0.1.0, the very first version that came out had two components to it. One was the creation of a token, which some of you may have heard of called BTC. But the other part was the creation of the world's first debt the world's first decentralized application. It was called Poker Lobby, and it was supposed to be a distributed way to play poker across the Bitcoin network. And in the second version of Bitcoin, Poker Lobby was entirely removed. But ever since then, we've had this tension for 15 years. From the very genesis of the world of crypto to today, we've had this tension where we've had two parallel tracks. The first, has been Bitcoin with BTC, an unchanging system for stable currency that you can transact with and that you can hold, and that's it. 
that's the entire list of things that you can do with it. Very, very popular with that transactional and holding capacity, but that's it. And then on the other hand, we have the entire world of crypto innovation, a flourishing of chains and dApps and systems and technologies, which remains ultimately a small fraction of the entire crypto space and a small fraction of Bitcoin. So we have this tension where Bitcoin can be and is popular and can be used for holding value. And as a result, we've got $1.3, $1.4 trillion effectively dormant or trapped in Bitcoin. And we have projects like Cardano building out tools that would allow you to do much more, to trade in a decentralized fashion, to lend in a decentralized fashion, and to build effectively an entire decentralized web architecture. We have functionality. So permaware and functionality, and those two up until now have not met. Cardano is a very special chain. It is by far the largest, most significant chain built as a UTXO system like Bitcoin and with a long-term view of the world like Bitcoin. But it too cannot interact with Bitcoin. And so the big announcement that we have today is that that is changing that we have a major change coming for the entire world of Bitcoin, the world of Cardano, the world of crypto, and the world of finance as a whole. Because for the first time, those two parallel lines, which were never to touch, are bending towards each other. We are now able, through Bitcoin OS, to verify on Bitcoin mainnet zero-knowledge proofs. And this gives Bitcoin brains and eyes. For the first time, we can build smart contracts on Bitcoin, and we can give Bitcoin the ability to see what is happening on other chains. And possibly the most important chain to do this with is Cardano. What this means is that we will soon have the ability to trustlessly bridge assets from Bitcoin to Cardano and vice versa. We will also have the ability to utilize the smart contract capacity of Cardano to write smart contracts that execute on Bitcoin mainnet, turning Cardano into a smart contract platform for the largest asset base in the world. We're looking at an entirely new phase for Bitcoin, Cardano, crypto, and finance. I'm super excited to be able to discuss it here on this panel first. Okay, so it's a lot to take in, but imagine this. I know some people, of course, they say, why do you need to do that? The Bitcoin just fine. It is a store of value. It is a hedge against inflation. It is uh, great for a counterparty act uh, for the debasement of the currency. It is great for uh, to counteract inflation. I got it. I got it. But you know what? I, I think some people want to do a little bit more with it, and they're going to build on top of it. The question that I have for if you're wherever you're at in your journey is this: Do you want to have that happen on like? the other next 20, 30, 40 layer one solutions that are coming out or the other 500, I'm just kidding, it's not that much, but there's a lot of layer twos that are coming out or layer threes, or would you rather have this built on the most secure, decentralized, computerized network in the entire planet, which would be Bitcoin? Me personally, I love it. I love Bitcoin, I love what it's doing, I love what it stands for, I own a lot of it. I mean, I own as much as I possibly can. If I had to make a choice, I would pick Bitcoin. And I think a lot of these institutions, and there's a reason why, if you take a look at the ETF, the difference between the ETF as far as Bitcoin goes and the ETF that's going on right now with Ethereum, institutions are not picking Ethereum. I think it's a good chain and things will do well. I'm not for sure. But I think the institutions are like, we like Bitcoin because you know what? You don't have to worry about a double spend. You don't have to worry about an attack. You don't have to worry about all the constant scamming and whatnot that, that goes on in all the other chains. So for me, I look at this, I'm like, this is a pretty good solution. I could be wrong. I'm, <laughs> I'm wrong a lot, but uh, that's just how I see things. And then I know people will say again, you know, the price has a move, bro. Look, I get it. Still down. But I mean, look, like I said before, Tesla had that great robo taxi and Optimus and it's still crashed the next day. And now it's going up because of earnings call. Sometimes the news does not equal price action. It's how it is. And of course, people say, well, Crown was a dead chain. I got you. Sure. But there's, this, there's a website called Cardano Cube, which goes over all the different products that are building on top of Cardano or using Cardano, and it's not too bad. Now, is Cardano the greatest chain of all time and does absolutely everything perfectly and flawlessly and super fast? <laughs> Come on. No, no, it doesn't. But it's going through a moment, and I got to appreciate that. 
So the question that we have to have here is what is Bitcoin OS? Because we heard what it is, but I'm just, I'm kind of confused myself because I just don't really get it. So this was the website. I linked this in the description. You can check it out yourself. You can read the white paper, the manifesto and the tech. Three things, actually, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six things caught my eye. First of all, roll up and true L2s. Using Bit, Snark, and Grail, Bitcoin OS allows for Bitcoin rollups. First of all, rollups, if you don't know, like on Ethereum, this is my, my, my general purpose thinking. When you talk about rollups, let's say that you are an engineer and you have a landscaper, right? And you have some of those landscaping work for you and you do engineering work for them and vice versa. And you do things both on you know, the same day over a, over a 30 day period. You charge him $100, he charges you $80, then you charge him 200 and then he charges you uh, 250 and back and forth and back and forth. So at the end of the day, you say, well, how much do I owe? Oh, guess what? You only owe me you know, 500 bucks because of all the different transactions we did. We didn't transact on every single transaction, right? That's kind of essentially what rollups are. They're gonna go above the layer one, they're gonna make all these transactions and they're gonna settle out. If you've ever tried to do Ethereum layer one transactions, good luck with the gas fees. And if you ever try to do that with uh, Bitcoin layer one, especially when uh, ordinals and ruins were coming out, you know how expensive it was. So that's the whole purpose essentially for rollups as I understand it, which makes sense to me. So rollups and true L2s, great. Programmable tokens, runes and ordinals essentially. Covenants, covenants bring conditional payments to Bitcoin. Oh, that's interesting. Opening up new apps for Bitcoin like trust, minimizing lending and vaults. Hmm. Trustless bridging, I'm not a big fan of bridges, but sure, holy grail technology for unleashing Bitcoin's potential all unit uniting all of crypto scalability solutions. Because if you, the problem with Bitcoin is <clears throat> it is secure, it is decentralized, but there's a big problem with scalability. Bitcoin seven TPS throughput is a thing of the past. Scalability optimized L2s and Bitcoin and OLS will empower cheap sub second Bitcoin transactions for the entire planet. But don't we have that in Lightning? We do, but people got options and some people don't like the Lightning UX, so whatever. Then lastly, I thought was, this is very big, private transactions. If you watched our video four or five days ago, we talked about how it was the Japanese government. They uh, unfolded a uh, money laundering scheme and it was done by Monero. Now they didn't, understand, they didn't say specifically how they track Monero, but I thought Monero couldn't be tracked. I find this interesting because of private transactions. I don't know how well it's gonna go over because first of all, I don't mind so much that Transactions are public it's on a public ledger. I got it. But you could do private transactions. Privacy focused rollups and protocols will stop snoopers and tyrants from monitoring all your financial activity. So that's essentially Bitcoin OS in a nutshell. If you want to read the white paper, uh, that's on the website. You can do that. So what we're going to do today is it's only 10 pages. We're going to uh, read this whole thing. So let me, let's start. In the December 20, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is I put the entire white paper in the chat GPT because I don't have time. You don't have time. And I just put this in chat GPT and I said, uh, can you summarize all that and explain to me like I'm 10? He says, sure. A ZK snark is a special kind of magic trick <laughs> in the world of computers. It lets someone prove that they know a secret or did something right without actually showing the secret or explaining all the steps. Here's how it works. And zero knowledge. Imagine you have a treasure chest and a key. And they say, do you have the key? And you're able to show them some part of it. And they'll say, oh, you do have it. So without showing everything, there is zero knowledge proof of the transaction. Such an, instead of showing all the steps of how you open the chest, it allows you to give a tiny quick to check proof. Non-interactive, you don't have to keep back and forth with the person and safe and sound. The magic trick guarantees that you really did what you claim. Essentially, you're doing everything. You're not showing how you did everything, but you're proving it in, in, a, in a substantiated way. So where is this used? Privacy and speed. Imagine you're paying for something with money and you want to show that you have the money without telling anyone how much or where it came from. ZK Snarks help with that. Speed on the internet, ZK Snarks help lots of people prove things quickly without doing big, slow, expensive calculations. It's like showing one quick proof instead of making everyone redo the work from scratch, which is one of the problems also with a, uh, a bloated blockchain. So ZK Snarks are like a clever magic trick that proves you did something correctly without showing all the details and transactions. So I hope that helped you. If you ever have problems, just use ChatGPT. It's way, way easier. So that essentially is the white paper of Bitcoin OS. What, how do they make money? 
Well, first of all, I want you to know how early you are. This was July 24, 2024. Before today, I had never heard of these guys. It states we did it with the first, the first project or the first time ever a ZK proof has been verified on Bitcoin mainnet by Bitcoin OS. They had no idea this was a thing. Final verification was confirmed in block 853-626, historic moment and historic block. A new era has begun for Bitcoin, enabling unlimited scaling and functionality. No forks required. Well, that'd be great because I'm not a big fan of forks anyhow. So with that, there is the manifesto. I linked this in the description as well. You can check it out. There was just a couple of key points. Bitcoin has problems, uh, and this is what it's it's uh, it's solving: scaling, privacy, and program pro programmability. There's a problem with scaling, like we talked about. There's a problem with privacy because it is a public ledger. I get it. Another thing is programmability. There's other ones like Stacks, which is a essentially a layer two smart contract platform. And I'm not saying you can't have other layer twos. Just take a look at Ethereum. <laughs> But if you take a look at it and go, well, this is another option, I like this option. I, I got to tell you, I like Bitcoin enough to say I would rather have everything just built on Bitcoin and go that route. I'm sure the Bitcoin maxes would, would agree somewhat with me. And then lastly, where did I put it? Oh, this is pretty interesting. It's got side chains, Lightning Network, and CSV, and it takes a look at the differences and how it does it and uh, how it's uh, superior. So... Where does the money coming from, Rob? Because that's the whole thing, right? You're a business, he's working for free? Probably not. Bitcoin OS teamed up with Sovereign. Sovereign is a great way to bridge over the funds that, are being, that have already been taken off of the Bitcoin platform. How's that? At a minimum, the most easily available capital to absorb is the over 154,000 Bitcoin currently circulating as centralized wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. And that's just it. You wouldn't need to do that. You wouldn't need to wrap Bitcoin, which is expensive, by the way. And you just keep it on this and use their own DeFi pro protocols. That's, that's almost 10 billion in wealth held by investors specifically aiming to put their holdings to work on a more flexible blockchain. And this is Sovereign. And then lastly, Bitcoin OS will soon render inferior. This is a pretty big claim. Bitcoin OS will soon render inferior scaling solutions like altcoins, sidechains, L1s, and the Lightning Network completely obsolete. That's ballsy. This will trigger the biggest capital rotation that crypto has ever seen, enriching those who can see it coming and devastating those who fail to respect Bitcoin's indomitable network effects. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section, but it does kind of come in line with what Charles Hoskinson said a couple of days ago in some interview. He said, look, he goes, Cardano is going to be bigger than Ethereum in 10 years. And 10 years later, it'll be bigger than Bitcoin. Now, I know that's just a small snippet, but I was starting to think about it. I'm like, hmm, I think he knew what was going to go on in the background with Bitcoin OS and Sovereign. So what's Sovereign? Sovereign is a decentralized Bitcoin trading and lending platform. And you can do a lot of different things. This is essentially DeFi on Bitcoin. I'm not saying that I'm going to use it. I'm just saying I see the flexibility now with Bitcoin where I did not see it before. So again, you can do all the research you want to, just bring it to your attention. I think this was a good play, especially with Cardano, bringing them into Bitcoin and just having them more visibility. But I could be wrong. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And again, talking about layer twos, we've talked a lot about Core. Core is layer two, it's in the top 100. It's built on the Bitcoin blockchain and it's in the top 100 now. I think it reached so high as like 60, but it's been fluctuating enough. We did a deep dive over on Damn DGen, links in the description, but essentially that's bringing DeFi to Bitcoin, just like Bitcoin OS did as well. And then before you poo poo it and say, well, that's a bad idea, and you know, this is not a great thing. Look, nobody gets it right. We talked about this yesterday. Michael Saylor's tweet from 2013, talking about Bitcoin days are numbered. And of course, we know he became the biggest Bitcoin bull out there. And he also talked about ordinals, how they're a really stupid idea. This was in 2023. And then in 2024, he said, you know what? Ordinals are not a bad thing. We should use those for digital IDs. And that's why I feel like if you keep hearing about this meme super cycle, why don't you just take a look at dog go to the moon? Again, uh, I like it. Circulating supply, total supply, and max supply are the exact same, meaning there's no unlocks and there's no VCs and there's no payouts. I don't get paid to talk about it, but I do own it. I like it to do well. And actually it's up almost 8% today. Tell me how your altcoin is doing. And on top of that, I'm a big believer in uh, this new one, Swee and Blub. And uh, we talked about this yesterday and uh, went up 24%. So it's ranked number 954 though. So it's super risky.
But that's all we got for today in the video. And that's it. So look, I know that was, damn, that was long. Ah, that was a lot of talking. First of all, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you got to go, I understand I've been rambling on for 20 minutes or so, but uh, I think it's a big thing.